Welcome to day two. Today we are going to make some piping bags with some cream in there and for that we need this little piping um, thing in the end of the bag, in the tip of the bag. So I'm using a old knitting pin here and just some um, rest clay that I rolled out in a thin layer and now I'm just rolling it around the tip of the knitting needle until I like the result of the uh, connection and so on. I am going to cut in some small tri triangular shapes here into this piping tip um, so that it looks real. Uh, this is a little tricky so take your time with this. When I'm happy with the uh, tip of this little one, then I'm just cutting off the excess clay in the length so that this little tip has the length and the size that I want it to, just like that. And you can of course make more of these and then bake them. I leave them on the knitting pin while baking. For the piping bag itself, I am using some cellophane. You can use some plastic from a tiny uh, bag if you want to, but I like the way that the cellophane is working. So I'm cutting out a piece that is six centimeters by six centimeters. Then I am lighting up my little tea candle here for this next step. I am taking this little square and I am uh, folding it on the long side so that two of the sides in the squares are touching each other. And then I'm using this big clamp to clamp down uh, the two uh, sides here. And I'm cutting off the excess because I don't want to have too much excess here. And then I'm slowly going over the tea light with this uh, connection here. And that should be connecting the back so I have this little triangular shapes of a back. And because I know it was hard to see what I did, I have this little piece of paper 6x6. Six and I'm showing here how I am folding up the cellophane, how I am clamping it, just like this. You need this big metal clamp for this, otherwise it won't work. And then I'm just cutting off the excess and slowly putting this tiny piece of excess here over the fire. And that's enough to make the little piping bags that you saw before. Then I'm just blowing out the little candle. Meanwhile, the tips have been baking and I can use some of my silver ink here to paint them all silver, nice and shiny, so they look right. So I'm just going to take uh, the little uh, piping tip thingy and placing it back on my uh, knitting needle to paint the outside and then I'm just taking it off when I'm ready to paint the inside. So just get it painted. Then I am going to cut off the tip of the little piping bag and put in the tip. And if the hole for the piping bag is uh, the piping tip is not big enough then you just cut a little more and then place it in there. I'm just using my knitting needle to place it as I want it to and then just holding on to the little tip and pulling out the knitting needle and there you have the piping bag with the uh, piping tip in there. I'm taking a tiny bit of a sewing thread and then some of this dessert topping master here I have the brown one and I'm just going 
down into the back and filling up the back until I have the size that I want it to. Then folding it really nice together here at the top and squeezing a bit of uh, the dessert topping master out of the end of it. And then making a knot with a little piece of sewing thread. Leave it to dry. I did this with both of mine here and now I'm just cutting the string off by the root or really nearby the knot and I'm cutting off the top here so they look really nice and neat. Um, one thing I have to tell you is that the dessert topping master is not going to dry up when there is no airflow around it. So that means that the inside of these piping bags are still soft. Uh, so just be careful around them uh, so that they don't pop. The little piece that is squirted out of the piping bag will uh, get hard, but the piping bag itself will not. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Happy crafting!